Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the freeform tab on the ribbon. So again, in order to see anything with the freeform tab, we're going to need to make an object and make it an edible poly. So I'm going to go and grab a plane, right click to end that operation, Alt W to make this full frame. So this plane is a parametric object again, and it only has four segments. So I'll go underneath shading, edge faces, or I can press F4 to toggle between. I need a lot more segments to use the freeform tools. I'm going to put 60 by 60. Um, if you're really modeling this, you're going to need a lot more, but this should be fine for the demo. And do be cautious with scale. Anything too large will not work with the paint tools. So again, I have this object, but it's still parametric. I'm going to right click, convert to an edible poly. And now you'll see that the freeform, as well as the modeling tab, show up in the ribbon. We have to be on the modify tab. If we're not, then we do lose access to some of the tools on the ribbon. So just make sure we're on the modifying tab. OK, so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the um, brush tools here. And we're going to come in and we're going to go to the push pull. And we get this little floating menu. And I'm going to dock this. And this is the size of our brush. So you'll see the brush. And let me actually change my, I'm going to change the color of my plane so it's a little easier for us to see this brush. Is that working? Better or worse? Yeah. Let's make it lighter. It's a little better. OK, so if I click and drag, you'll see that I'm able to deform the surface. With the brush size, I can change this. To change the size, I'm changing Control Shift to change strength, I am holding down Alt Shift. And I can, if you look at the line, this is your strength. If I hold down Control Shift, you can see that the brush size changes. And you see that updating up here. So now I have a much higher strength. I'm going to undo that. So again, if I want to lower the strength, hold down Shift and Alt. And now I have the brush size, but it's a very low strength for my deform. If I want to adjust the brush size itself, shift control drag with my left mouse button, and I can change and make a much more subtle, smaller movement. So I'm going to undo that. And I can just use this X to cancel that operation. It goes back to where it was. So let's say we're making a change. I'm going to make my uh, my brush strength a little bit higher. Get a little movement here. We're making a change, and we, we get something that we like, but we are afraid of messing it up. So let's say I like this bumpiness over here, and I want to make some more adjustment to it, but I'm afraid I'm going to come back and uh, completely destroy it. I can accept that, and then it's going to lock in that setting. And then I can come back in and make some more changes to it. And if I decide I want to revert, I can go to this button and select the area that I want to revert. So maybe I like this, but I want to revert that. And now I can click, and it will push things back. But it's only pushing it back to the last state. So you'll see when I come in, this little bump here I haven't touched. And even though I'm holding down my mouse, it's not changing it. It's not allowing it to change any further because this is the previous state that I've locked in. So that's a nice feature. Again, I can commit to the changes. Um, if I make new changes, let's go and make sure we have the brush selected. And I'm going to increase the strength. If I commit to this, and then I want to go and make new changes. So I'm going to add another change. I can go and revert. 
it will push it back, but it won't get rid of the previous changes I've kept. So that's a nice feature. Um, let's go and look at some of the other tools here. So we can push pull, we can relax and soften. So I do have a little bit here that I, I can play with. We can smudge. So I can push it from side to side and smudge things around. We can pinch and spread. So if you look, it's actually pinching the geometry together. And if I hold down control, I can reverse that. So pinch, control is spreading. So maybe I get a little weird geometry and it's too pinched together. I can, my strength is a little too high. I can spread it. So let's go in and take a look at this. Um, undo. Here's my scale and my strength. I'm going to pull it down. And let's hold down control and just kind of click. And I can get a little bit more control over my spread. So again, you can dock these tools. I can create a little noise. And it just breaks everything up into a noisier surface. Uh, smudge, we can exaggerate what's there. Again, the brush to push and pull, and then we can flatten. So I can come back over it and flatten out the changes I've made. So those are our regular uh, paint deform tools and our options for those. Okay, so the next tool we want to take a look at in the ribbon is under our freeform tab, we're going to be looking at conforming one object to another. So currently we have this plane that I've deformed and I'm going to go to our create tab, create another plane, and I'm just going to make a small plane. I do have a lot of segments still, so I still have that 60 segments. Right click to end that operation and I'm going to move this up above the surface so we can see it. I'm also going to change the color just to make it a little bit clearer what we're working with. And there are 60 segments. I don't need quite that many. I can bring it down a little bit. Bring it down to 40. And because we want to use the freeform modeling ribbon, it has to be a um, edible poly object and right now it is still a parametric so I'm going to convert this to an edit poly and now we're going to use this plane to conform this shape so a couple settings one this usually says draw on grid and we're going to click on this and bring it down to draw on surface and then we're going to pick what the surface is that we're drawing on so it's this plane we're using and then we're going to pick an offset. So how far off of the surface do we want to have it set? Um, we can set it to zero and then it will flatten itself to the surface. So if I click and drag on here, you'll see it's flattening down to the surface and we can't see um, the new object because it's intersecting with the surface. So if we do some offset, I'll just pick about one. Now it's going to conform to the shape but leave it offset um, depending on the size that you have set in your custom settings it's going to use one unit so unit setup so you see as I push it's conforming to that shape and we just have a couple tools here for your conform now the first thing is when you look at it we have a smaller inner ring and a larger outer ring the inner ring is your 100% and your outer ring is your fall off. So I'm holding down control and dragging to change the fall off percentage. And if I make it very tight, um, it's going to be a, a harder edged brush. And we're going to have a real hard control with it. If I hold down control and allow that to have a, a larger fall off, we're going to get a much smoother result from this on how it lays down. So here are our tools. Um, 
you can move the object with the conform brush, so I can slide it across the surface once I have it down there if I want to adjust it. Here we have our scale. So if I want to take and scale the geometry, you can see I'm shrinking the polygons. It's almost like that pinch tool. Here we can relax the geometry and it's just going to try to put back and relax that geometry down. And then we can rotate the geometry. So if we click and drag. If you just keep doing it, you'll see it twist the geometry around. Okay, so that's how we're going to be able to take one piece of geometry and then have the other one conform to that shape. And they are still two separate pieces of geometry. If I come in and select this top one, you'll see that I can move it off. So this is good if I'm trying to do some sort of uh, change in scale and make a duplicate object. Maybe hair or any of that, this will work for. If I have a road that I want to attach to this path, this would also work.